Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, getting ready to start uh, another video. Uh, I think today we're going to go through, uh, we have uh, these files here. we got to finish some pre-AM stuff, and uh, we're going to do some logistics, which is really short uh, during the beginning of the game, and then we'll, we'll probably get through my allied movement, which isn't very much. So I'm going to load the game up here. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, love to have you support the channel by subscribing and click on the uh, bell for notifications. And then um, also, uh, what else I can say? Oh, uh, I do have links in there for buying the product. If you buy it on Amazon, that's an affiliate link. So uh, if you prefer to buy it on there, I get a little bit of money for that. Or I do have a link to our uh, my store website. Um, I just go to the homepage because we're actually revamping the whole website. And I don't want to put the product page and go right to it uh, because that might change as we're redoing everything. So anyway, got all that fun stuff out of the way. So thanks for joining. Uh, so basically, if you, this is the, I'm just going to continue on. I kind of debated if I should just take these the in, in between stuff out, like logistics and stuff. Uh, and just do the movement and combat part of it. But I think I'm just going to do everything inclusive. And again, this is not a how-to video. Uh, I guarantee you we're making some mistakes. I was reading through the rules. Uh, I caught myself doing some stuff wrong. I've moved some American units I'm not allowed to. Uh, in some of the some of the files, you'll see we mo I'm moving back because it's like, oh, they got to stay around this area for these two turns or whatever. Uh, so there's lots of little details there. Um, I also noticed, so like, remember the last file, we made a mistake on the play by email and uh, forgot about the PR for entrenchments. Well, we just played live. like So like, this is only file like uh, 13, it says. We're on like file 51 or 52. And the last game I just played with Clay, I don't think I've been paying attention to my bonus PR in the entrenchments. So, <laughs> so we did it early on. And then I've already forgotten about it. So, again, it doesn't matter to me. I just enjoy the whole process of the game. I mean, I want to get it as accurate as I can. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I'm still having fun. Clay's having fun. We just have a good time. So, I also know I also was reading some of the rules, and I don't think I'm doing everything correct with some of these armor attachments and the restrictions. But I'm going to – actually, this week, I'm going to read through the Walk Tim Ryan exclusive rules and see if we can clean some of that up. If you notice anything we're doing wrong, please don't hesitate to uh, point it out. And I can always let you know if we figured it out later. Because like I said, we're 50-something files into this and I'm only I'm only putting up files. I think we'll do files 13 through 16 today because they're not very long. Um, and I kind of like to do it this way because then if we do have to look up rules where we're playing and stuff, you guys don't have to watch that. And unfortunately, uh, with Streamlabs OBS, that's what I use for screen capture. Uh, I can't just pause it, do all my stuff, and then unpause it. If I pause it, it creates a separate video, then I got to splice them together. And I just, I'm not that patient. So I probably got to work on that stuff. But uh, anyway, sorry for the bright background. I'm still upstairs. I don't want to not do videos. I want to do videos, so I'm going to do this until my studio downstairs is finished, and then I'll be able to work in the uh, spare bedroom down there. It's going to become my studio, and I'll be able to set up my lighting and do everything I want. It'll be consistent, uh, but that, that got postponed. Uh, the guy working on it got sick, and so it's been postponed until, I think, at least until the end of next week. And uh, I wanted to start getting videos up. I'm tired of waiting. So appreciate you joining me. Thanks for all the comments. I've gotten some nice comments on Consum World. Uh, thanks for letting us post on Consum World. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with that, they did some upgrades, um, how they look. They're almost kind of like Facebook looking a little bit now. Uh, a little more gra graphical user interface for everybody. Uh, they still got the old forums and stuff. Um, and then I uh, love putting these on YouTube. Got a lot of subscribers this week putting up the new videos, so thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully you can chime in. Uh, one of these days, if I'm comfortable enough, I might do like a how-to on a turn or something. We'll see. Maybe maybe do some examples of combat. If people want that, please put it in the comments, and I'll work on that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people are asking for examples of play and stuff. 
I'm just not super confident to to do that. Um, at least not yet, but I, I'm getting there. I, I, it's a great system. It's really not as as uh, complex as people think. I think it had a bad rap because the rule books back in the day were pretty pretty rough when it first came out. But they have rewritten the rules. I think they're on version twenty, uh, and it's to me it's put together pretty pretty good, just as good as most rule books. So and better than a lot of others. So anyway. Without further ado, let's get you out of the game. If you got any questions, put them down below, and uh, uh, we'll just go from there. I'm just a dude doing this for fun, so eventually sometime I'd like to have enough subscribers I could let commercials run on there maybe once or twice, try to monetize a little bit, uh, try to maybe pay for the hobby a little bit, but uh, just, just labor love here right now. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, let's see where are we at. So this, so this is the file. This is uh, uh, we did the uh, ground assault for the pre AM ground assault for the Germans. So this will be Clay. Uh, he will be doing his uh, reactions and advancements and step losses and stuff like that. So again, remember we started out early in the game. We were doing play by email. Uh, we have since changed that. I don't know what file we changed it at, uh, but we started. I'll see. I could probably look it up here quick. Uh, yeah, so I changed it because we were going to swap in and out, do live play, and we just started, we just kept doing live play. So after about file 31, uh, we just started uh, basically having a game night uh, twice a month. We play on the first and second Wednesday most months. Sometimes that moves if life gets in the way, if you get, we both have our own businesses. So sometimes we have to deal with business stuff and work late or whatever, so... Sometimes we move that around, but if a lot of times on the first and second Wednesday, you could uh, see us playing on Vassal. Okay, anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of rambling on. Didn't mean to do all that. So let's go resolve that and see how this goes, and I'll try to interject some things as I see fit uh, uh, that we need to do. So Clay says, I'll resolve my ground assault attacks and advances or losses to be taken. After this file, I'll do a file to kick off our transport and logistics file. Those are really short. I thought about not including them, but I think I will just for completeness. Uh, he says, okay, I'll start up north. Both of us had a tendency to start up north on just about every file and work our way down south versus jump around. It makes it a lot easier. All right, so he's down here where he had a prepared assault. He had these guys pounding me pretty good, so he's removing those markers. Um... He said, I'll do some notes as I go down. So he's going to interject a little bit, uh, mostly so we remember what's going on, because I told him we want to, I wanted to put this up on YouTube, and he was fine with that. I'll start with the second attack that happened in Hex Northeast 5725. I'll advance with one stack. So I could just click on it, but since I can just scroll down here, if I just click advance, I'm, I have it so it'll follow his moves. But uh, he basically destroyed me here so he can advance with these guys. Uh, now, leg units in PA advance can advance up to two hexes. There is no movement halt per Goss rule 7.3.3. That stops my unit from advancing two hex max distance. So he's going to go there and there. Uh, the next one he said, okay, I did an attack in hex 5728. Okay, so that was down here where he destroyed me. So <laughs> he's going to move those guys. Oh, two hex advance, because like, they're both infantry. So he advances the one, the other guy's hanging out there. Next, hex 4904. It was 4904, it must be... Must be on the south, you know, southeast 4904. So we're on the south map now. I like to center it up a little bit. All right, so here he attacked me, and I must tell you, I can't remember because, you know, but I took the step losses. I think they're in held because the entrenchment's more important. I'll use a spade. So one of the things you can do in the game is if you use a spade marker, if he moves the spade marker, it'll move the map. And then, otherwise, if he clicks on a unit and moves it, it'll move the unit while it moves the map, and you might miss the first move. So we kind of like to move the spades around. It moves the map around before we start clicking on stuff, so that's always handy when, when we remember to do that. 
All right, so so you held the hex, so the effect for me, I don't know what that means. So effect for me, but maybe he meant no effect for me. So nice, you see those strips there. I don't want to hover over it because then I'd see what's under it. You're not supposed to be peeking. Um, but I like to see those strips there because that means those guys are taking a beating. So we like that. Southeast 4706. Oh, down here. Yep, so he had destroyed that one. He has a discretionary of one, so he doesn't want to take the step loss, so he's going to retreat both units. So he can he can do a retreat to fulfill that discretion. So a mandatory loss, you have to take a step loss with a max of one per unit, I believe. And then your discretionary hits, you can roll to try to push through, which, mean, which means it'll become, you know, regular hits or cause damage. Or you can, you can retreat and take fatigue hits, and the rules outline what order you have to do that. Um, so he's deciding to retreat because he destroyed the guy blocking it, and I think he just thinks he'll move there next turn. And... These are some, this is 116 Panthers, so there's probably some tanks or things in there and expensive mechanized units he doesn't want to lose. Uh, 4507 was right here where we held. The 28th ID did its job. He had a discretionary. Since it's the first, uh, since it is first discretionary, you convert it to a step loss without doing a PR roll. So you can take the first discretionary, but otherwise you have to make a PR roll if you want to try to, as the attacker, if you want to try to push the attack. And if you fail the PR roll, you will take the step loss and retreat, right? Because um, he's saying, however, if I had two discretionary hits, I'd be able to take a first as a step loss, but the second you have to make a PR. So you kind of gamble. You're like, well, I want to, you know, do whatever. So in this stack, he's going to take the step loss and stay there. There's some nice tanks. Love the, I do love the markers in this game. I don't know what other people think about it, but I, I think they have, they look nice. They're laid out well, uh, but they're to me they're not too crowded. I played some games with them where the, for whatever reason the counter to me is just hard to read. I think they do a really good job with as much information as they have. They have a lot of information on these markers. All right, next down south, oh right here, him. Yep. So destroyed, crushed that spot, so they're gone. He's going to advance. Get full Schumacher with some engineers. The next one down here, we held this one here. That was a good deal. So he has to make a PR check since he received a star. His PR is a 6. He has to get a 5 or less. He gets a 2, so he's good. So since he passes it, the star turns into nothing. If he would have failed it, it would have turned into a discretionary hit, and then you treat it like a discretionary hit. i got to have some water. I'm still dealing with a tiny little cold or something. All right, the last hex down here. The 4th Infantry Division. Nothing happening here. Attacking across the river is tough. By the way, this is important. When attacking over a river, if you use your engineer to prevent your units from being halved due to the river penalty, then that same engineer cannot give you a column shift in your favor for the IP entrenchment, etc. Okay? So I like when he gives me those little tidbits. I'm always liking to learn. So I always tell Clay, feel free to put your reasons in there. Be very descriptive. When you're doing a play-by-email, the more you put, almost the better. I mean, maybe you can overdo it, but, you know, the better, the more you put, the better. When you're playing live, you can obviously talk. So, all right, so he's doing some cleanup. He's just removing. Um, so we had, these aren't really ammo depleted, but they didn't have a fired way to mark artillery fired. So... We had to come up with ways to mark stuff, so we were turning stuff sideways or whatever. Uh, later on, we start using spades for fired versus ammo depleted. You know, we'll, we'll come up with some ways of dealing with it. 
until that new module comes out, which I'm really waiting for. Someone I can't remember who's working on it, but someone is doing a new module for Walk Them Rhine. So it looks like uh, Hurtgen and Atlantic Wall and um, Lucky Forward, which I just got my copy of. I thought it was back on my chair still, but it's not. I got my I just got my copy of Lucky Forward, so we can do some stuff with that down the down the file. Okay, so that's it. So I'm not going to start a new logistics file. And that was file 13, I believe. Yep. So I'm just going to open up the next file, which will be 14. This is going to be a really short logistics file. I'm, I'm going to basically do up to an hour's worth of stuff. And I, I watched through the files, so I figured we could do um, the four files would take about an hour, depending on how much I ramble on. I like to zoom in a little bit closer. You guys have to tell me too, because sometimes I've watched games, you can't see the counters and it's kind of annoying. This is a little close. I mean, I suppose if we're going to do something specific, but it kind of gets a little bit blurry on the map uh, and stuff. So I try to pick this one here. So let me know what you guys think. All right. So Clay says, okay, start a logistics. Weather will be fixed. Uh, the first, we're playing variable weather, but I think the first turn you play with historical even if you're doing variable so oh yeah all right so weather will be fixed only for december 16th based on the rules however so clay already said all that so starting on the 17th we like to roll our weather because then you can't you don't have the ultimate uh meteorologist exactly telling you what the weather is going to be like so it's overcast with normal ground conditions so everything's still frozen so I do a bunch of, when I'm doing all those clicks and nothing's happening, it's because he's up on one of these charts. So he was probably, you can see this is outlined red. So he was setting up the weather track so we know what's going on. By the way, the weather chart is on the German turn track, bottom right. Okay, so now both German and allies are in supply. So the rules in Walk and Ride is you're automatically in supply until the end of December 17th night turn. Then you start using supply rules. So that's why the logistics and stuff is really quick right now. Uh, setting air, no leaders on both sides. They cannot be activated until December 17th. Uh, there's no command boundaries to adjust. You're not allowed to adjust anything. Truck points for the Germans are used only to move leg units around. They get two truck points for the 6th Army, two truck points for the 5th Army, and one truck point for the 7th Army. Uh, Germans, based on the campaign, has a stockpile for ammo. German has 10 ammo points to be shared, so he has to share those between his three, three armies, I think. So he's probably, let's see if we can go look at what he's doing here. I'm guessing he's probably marking his ammo, ammo points on here. Oh, he's putting, he's putting markers. That's what all these clicks are for, so. So he did three, three three and then he gave the extra one there so so this is you know i usually don't click on this and watch i just click through it because i i don't need to watch all he's doing i did this just to show you guys what what he's doing german adv that's the ammo depletion value for each army based on the campaign is a three and he can spend ammo points to build up i'm guessing he's still He's marking his ADVs on there. Uh, replacements from the charts. He doesn't get any replacements this turn. Replacements for culling. Uh, so he had five infantry losses at least, so he's going to bring back one. Oh, here's the other thing. So when we started this out, we were told to use the sequence of play from the Walk Dem Ryan rulebook, which is different than the current Goss sequence of play. Uh, so we did that for the first few days. Uh meaning so that would be like three game turns a day so i think we did that for like six game turns maybe uh later on we were told just use the regular sequence of play which is better uh just because we're familiar with it and it doesn't really change much but in the in the walk dim ryan i don't remember what was different but they they kind of do some things like where replacements are at i think even some of the supply checking they did it in different parts so if you see that and it doesn't jive with your logistics phase in the beginning, that is why. 
All right, so back over to me. So that was it. That was the whole logistics. Like I said, I thought about skipping it, but I would like to include it for completeness. So we're going to go to file 15, 20 minutes into this video. And let's zoom in to this level and just kind of find our bearings. All right, so I said, okay, air allocation, I got zero. Uh, my rest turn is set. Not sure if you set a rest turn or not, or don't have to. I don't think the Germans had to do a rest turn until later. Uh, supply is good. No leader activation. I said, I don't get truck stuff yet. And I said, well, it says I can use truck points to move activated units. So I must start using them now. And I found out looking stuff up, I have six truck points. I don't think I do much with truck points. I have no idea what I'm doing. Because it's been a while. Let's go see what I'm fixing over here. I must be doing some stuff somewhere. Oh, I'm putting out. So all those clicks for getting all the markers that go on your army stuff and putting them up top there. So it's like, it's like what am I doing? I'm trying to organize them a little bit. Sorry, you get to bask in my OCD. <laughs> and I'm not the only gamer that has it, so whatever. Uh, so no replacements for me, but I can call some losses. I don't have enough to get. I needed four to get losses. I didn't have enough. I do get to activate a couple of units according to rule 37.1.5 under December 16th AM game turn. Two units. So 3429 Southeast, so let's go find that just so you can see it before it moves. So we're in the Southeast here. It's 3429, who's... I don't know why I said 3429 Southeast. That's here, let's see what I put here. Oh, I must have meant Northeast because I moved the Northeast guys. So they activate. And I think that's it. So I tell them, check my work and back to you. That's the end of that file. So not a huge deal. And then we get to the uh, 16th AM. Uh, this would be my turn. So the 16th AM turn. Maybe I'm going to do one more file. I didn't check the fourth file, so hopefully it's not a monster file. I'm going to zoom in here, and I, this isn't going to be a super long term because, remember, all my guys are facing, I have them all facing this way on the uh, deal because they are inactive. And then I turn them face up when he does something to activate them or when I get to make rolls and activate so many units. So, okay, so I got no fuel to worry about. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the ammo depletions because they're not depleted. We use them for firing, so... I got no batteries going in and out. Uh, all my current artillery is stuck in place. Uh, construction. Only activated units can do construction. Nonetheless, no construction. Movement. <laughs> Combat reserve. I'm not sure I can. It says I can't change from tactical mode unless I'm activated. So I'm wondering if putting units in combat reserve is changing to a tactical mode. Okay, so my guys are frozen. I can't do tactical assaults, like I can't, you know, from one hex, I'm not sure, you know, in case you're not familiar with the rule, prepared assaults, you can attack with multiple hexes on one, on one hex, a tactical assault is one hex attacking one hex. It says that I'm not allowed to put my guys in tactical assault, or tactical mode, um, but I wasn't sure if a combat reserve, if I could put them in combat reserve, if that would be considered... So I had to do some looking up, but I found it. Uh, 5.1.3. Other functions. A unit must be in tactical mode to perform the following functions. Break down into component companies or reform into original unit. Be designated, into, be designated combat reserve. So if I'm wrong, let me know and I'll... I wonder if I did that wrong because I said it. I said they had to be in tactical mode, which now I'm reading that that I shouldn't be able to do that. So anyway, looks like I put some guys in combat reserve. 
Uh, might be misunderstanding that, but anyway. So I'm marking some dudes in combat reserve to bolster my line a little bit. Okay, movement, road first. So you do, so you do strategic road movement, which is typically if you're trying to get up to the front because you have to be far enough from the front. And uh, then you can do tactical road movement and ground movement. Um, so I'm doing road movement first. So not a ton to do. So we got the guys that just activated back here in uh, Vis Viselum or whatever. And uh, they're going to just truck down the road here. Get over there and kind of help bolster St. Vith a little bit. Uh, then I got this recon unit over here that's going to start moving. I don't know what that means. I put don't see any MH on there. I don't know what MH would be. <laughs> so, this, you know, when I get caught up with the files, they won't be so archaic, but I don't know what that is. But 2.5 movement so far. I had to adjust it. I meant 3.5. I said I'm going to put them back. We'll have to move off-road. So you're only allowed to... Um, move one form of movement you can either do and there was just a debate on this on the facebook page a little bit where people were talking about combining movement why that's not allowed um, you're either allowed to do road movement with a unit or off-road with a unit um, and i can't remember the arguments for why you have to only do one form of movement i don't have a problem with it i i think it's fine to me it's a game mechanic and you you play the game inside the mechanic so it seems to make some sense to me. It uh, it had to do, I think, with uh, using columns and things like that. And it just was less clutter on the map. So anyway, so I put them back because I'm going to do non-road movement. So okay, non-road movement. Uh, so I get this infantry unit down here. So you can see where um, when you move, it brings you to the unit. But he didn't see the first hex I moved from. He also... Uh, the one bad thing is um, this module, like you can sometimes click on a unit and you can look at movement trails. Okay, so I can do a backspace and look at it. So I did a backspace now that I've seen where he's moved. Uh, I have noticed with Vassal, if you're playing live and you backspace and redo stuff, that can cause problems. So I don't do it in live mode, but in a file, it's not going to hurt anything. So I was here. I'm going to go one and I'm move up to there and stop. Okay, same with here. So I'm going to move that. What do we got here? Oh, maybe I was just organizing the stack. So these guys are going to move. They just moved one. And then back to my little recon guy. And we knew he was right here. So he's moving there, 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 and there. And he's got like 14 movements. So every time I move next to I'll try not to hover over him because you'll see what's there, even though, you know, unintentional. But... Um, each time you move by, it costs more movement points. And uh, so that's it for my movement. Replacements, I don't have any yet. Uh, okay, no air, but I'm going to see if you have any potential defensive fire support. And then if not, I'll do my offensive fire support. I said, okay, well, I better let you look and see if you want to do any defensive fire support. Then I'm going to drop some shells on your guys in the rough. And get my shots off while I can. So I can fire my artillery if he's got guys that are out in, out in the open or the rough. That's that's not um, movement covering terrain. So um, now here, when I was moving, you have to halt if it's not movement covering terrain. But I, I only could, I took a chance because he had artillery here, which couldn't reach me, and artillery here, which couldn't reach me. So. Hopefully we didn't do that wrong, but that's the kind of stuff when you're playing, you know, you should watch with your opponent. So that's it. So that is the end of that file. So now the great debate. We are we're only 29 minutes into this. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take a chance. We're going to do file 17, which is, I believe, offensive fire, yep, offensive fire support for me. So this should give us a little action finally. That other stuff is pretty boring. It's not boring when you're playing. I love it when I'm playing. I, I even enjoy the logistics phases in this game and trying to figure out supply and how to be the most efficient and keep your HQs in a good thing. And then, you know, the allies don't have to deal with it too much, but you have, like, right here, you can see here's he's got his Panzer Army 
is uh, command boundaries. Um, so you got your area of operations. Not a big deal for me. I only have two, but then when I get later on, I get to bring in another core. Uh, it's just interesting to figure out where to put those command lines and stuff. And I'm not very good at it, but I, I sure love doing it. I sure love trying to figure it out. To me, it's just like a big old Rubik's cube that I'm trying to solve. Which I can't solve the Rubik's cube either. Okay, so first one. He's on a, a vantage point and you are in the open. So I'm marking my spotter here. I am a target. So if you look here, he's out in the open. So he's, this guy's, normally you can see one hex, but on a vantage point, I believe it's three. So I can see him, and we are going to drop some shells on that guy. Unfortunately, my guy's only a company, so it has to be a light mission. And so I'm, gonna, so I'm just going to call in some core assets. So I mark the two guns that I call in. So I got a two and a three. So I get five. Uh, it's minus one because of this turn I have a minus one penalty plus the die roll. So it's four plus the die roll. I get a big old three. That's a seven. Not sure what... Oops, I'm hitting the die roller. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ignore the three, seven, five, and three. That was not part of the file. That was me hitting the die roller. <laughs> I just thought I have it. I was rolling for my artillery. All right, so I rolled a zero. So four, so no reason to mark him. So mark those guys as fired, basically. And that was it. Okay, so the next, okay, next spotter and target. Also on a vantage point, and he is in the rough. And rough was, so if you go on the chart here, and you look at rough, so... The M here means it's movement covering terrain. The square O, I believe, is observational covering terrain. And uh, no, no, that's blocks line of sight. These are the, uh, so this is observational. So this has nothing on it. So if you're moving or if you're just sitting there, you are in the open on those. Okay, so next spotter. Okay, this guy right here, now that's a battalion and an entrenchment. That's going to be good. And we're going to fire at that guy. So rough reduces me from seeing three. So rough does, so I did find in the rules that rough, you can normally see three hexes from a vantage point, but if you're doing rough, you can only see two. But I'm still within two there, so we're golden. I'm calling in eight points, so I'll mark the guns. Boom, boom, boom. Uh... It's minus one because of the turn, plus one for the vantage point. So it's basically eight plus the die roll. I get a big old eight. That's sweet. And then he'll have modifiers, but I don't know what his modifiers are. And you're not allowed to look at a stack. So I would pass him the file. And uh, he would tell me what he would tell me the results and then apply those results. So. That's where when we started playing live, that's pretty sweet because you can do all that stuff in one shot. So this makes it a little more complicated as you guys are following along because we're swapping files. But I mean, I'm looking forward to when we get up to where we're doing live play and, and you guys can just see the whole thing smooth and in order. So that'll be helpful. So hang in there for the live play. It'll be, it'll be better, I think, in my opinion. All right, so I'm just marking those guys fired. Uh, again, they're not ammo depleted, but there is no way to mark them fired in this module. Uh, and we wanted it to stick out. Later, we start using the, we just start using the spades. All right, so I marked this prepared assault thing because we can't put notes. And I put 16 firepower so he would know how much firepower is there. Because if you do a long file, let's say you shell like, nine spots which you know i guess nine might be a little crazy but it's not a, unheard of for the americans i've had rounds where i've fired five six seven, uh, maybe even seven different barrages i got a lot of artillery um that way he could mark it so if you're doing play by email it works good all right i'm going to mark pa label and set it um just i was basically telling him why i put a prepared assault marker on him 
Next one, spotter and target. So here's my spotter with the ace. I got this uh, battalion here. And we're going to get this guy here. So marking uh, three guns. So the, usually with the Americans, most of the guns are threes. Like this one here is probably a two. I'm going to guess I use these. But um, you don't have to use all the firepower. Because like, let's say I use three guns of three. That's nine firepower. You can only fire in, in groups of eight. So I'd have to fire an eight and a one. The problem with that one is it's probably not going to ever do anything unless I get really lucky and roll like an eight or a nine. And it also increases my chances to ammo deplete. So it's not worth having it. It might be if it was like an eight and a six, then I might want to chance it. But I like to, I like to try to always fire eights and eights when possible. Because you can fire more than one barrage of eight, but the, you have to have a heavier mission or whatever. Anyway, so. So I'm marking my guns. I got no vantage point, so because of my minus one, because of the surprise of the 16th, I'm still kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, I get seven plus the die roll. I get a three, so it ends up being a ten. So I'm just moving this down here, putting it on there for him with a 10, and removing my stuff and marking people fired. And I said, that's all I can do. I got no ground assault, so my guns don't have ammo issues in the beginning, or at least that was our understanding. I don't know if we did that right. Um, but my guns, basically, I, I, did, I didn't have to roll ADV and stuff. I would just... So I just remove all the fire markers because they, they're good to go. No supply check, no fatigue, so I'm done. And I think we'll probably call it there <coughs> because we can look at the next file quick. Uh, let's see, where are we at for time? Oh, we're at 37 minutes. We, we can do another one, I guess. Let's do another one. Kind of doing it by the seat of my pants here. It looks like this is just his resolving fire support file. So because I don't know what this one is. We didn't put a very descriptive thing in there, but let's do this one. We'll probably we'll probably call it after this one. This is just going to be him resolving the artillery so you can see what my barrages did. All right. So, okay, let me resolve offensive fire support. First one. We go over here, and he's got the markers over here he's using. Let's see, where was it? Mm, he's not on it yet. Uh, I lost it. Oh, it's right here. He put the spade over his guys, and I didn't want to hover over it. All right, so 16 was the result before the die roll modifiers. Uh, he had a minus one for being in rough, and he has a plus one because he's got a lot of guys there. So he probably had like six, six steps in the hex. So that's going to be a, a break even. And I don't have my charts up. Let me let me bring the charts up real quick, just because we're not this video isn't that long. Um, So you can see kind of how it works. Follow along. So artillery would be right. This is the artillery. So these are the modifiers he did right here. So he had uh, rough was a minus one. So you can use group A. You can use group A, group B, and group C, but you can only use two of the three, right? Right down here, no more than one DRM from each A, B, and C. And only a total of two DRM <coughs> from A, B, or C can apply. So you can use one of each of these. So if you're in a in a village in the woods, you don't get a minus two, minus three. You would just pick the best one. And then you and if you had like rough terrain, let's say he was sitting in an improved position and he was mixed with armor, you don't get to add all three. You can only pick two of those three, so you pick the best ones. 
And then the plus one he got for unit density was here, so I know that he had five to six steps in there. If there's seven or more, it's a plus two, and if it's a Z step, which is like a zero step unit to two steps, then you get a minus one because there's not a lot of dudes in the hex. So what we ended up with is a 16 because his modifiers, he had the rough for minus one and he had the uh, five to six steps for plus one. So they ended up neutralizing each other. So we ended up with two. These are just step losses. AS is artillery shifts, which is important if he's attacking me. Uh, the artillery shift sits on him, and then that's going to give me modifiers like you saw uh, in the last game video. So he's going to have to take two hits, which is pretty good. So stays at 16, two hits. So with artillery, he can basically retreat for one, and then I believe you take whatever steps you have remaining, divide by two, and round up. So he has two step losses, so he's going to retreat, which will leave one step loss. And then he will divide that one by two, which is 0.5, and then it rounds up to one. If he wanted to try to hold that hex, I think he'd have to make a PR check because he took two losses. The first one you can take and stay. And, and this is if you're just out in the open. If you're in an entrenchment, that changes it. But then he would have to see if he could try to hold and take the other step loss. But there's no reason for him to do that. He's just going to get pummeled. So so he does that, and then he's going to take a step loss. And then when I do all these clicks, it's because then you got to make sure, and this is something that took me a while to not forget to do, is you got to remember to go up here and mark your step losses because then later on you get to cull those step losses, and they, they vary. There's generic call points, but in Walk Them Ryan it has its own, and I can't remember them off the top of my head. I think it's like, for example, the American, it's either the armor or the infantry. For every three steps I take, I can recycle one of those back into reinforcements, which is pretty good. A three-to-one ratio is pretty good. It's usually like five or six-to-one. So that's a pretty good ratio. All right, so the next one. Uh, was down here, and I believe that was a 10. Yep, 10 was the result. He has the minus one for rough and the plus one for steps, so that ended up neutralizing. And if you go back to the chart here, um, that's going to be a 10, which if you look on here, a 10 is one step loss. So even if he retreats, I don't think he can shake off the one. Maybe you still can. Let's see what he does. One hit. So he'll retreat. I think, you, yeah, you can because <coughs> you basically retreat while the artillery is happening. So you're not staying in the hex. And it's remove one, divide the remainder by two. So All right, so that's the end of the log file. I don't know what the next one is. And we're 43 minutes into it. So I think I'm just going to do a shorter one. I usually like to watch the files before I do them because then I know if there's any mistakes that I got to point out or catch. And I was doing about half of those files off the seat of my pants, which is fine. We're just having fun, right? We're just enjoying ourselves. It's a good Saturday. I got I got this Saturday off from the store. I, I, were, I have a game store, Little Big Wars, and I um, I uh, work sat I work Saturdays. My days off are Monday, Sunday, Monday. And uh, I do take one Saturday off, and my wife went down to the Lakes Country to be with the sister-in-law, and my daughter's working, so I thought, I'm banging on another video today. Uh, anyway, so that's it. Uh, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed the videos. This one seemed a little dry because it was a lot, of, uh, a lot of logistics and stuff like that, a little bit of artillery shelling. It's going to pick up, trust me. Uh, it gets pretty, gets pretty crazy. That's why I like to zoom out. Uh, it's not going to matter too much, but uh, I like to zoom out like this and take a look at the whole map, kind of see what it lo what the, what it looks like. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers. You can see right here he's punching a little bit of a hole through with his uh, Falschermjägers. Here's you know this is all original bulge stuff. He's trying to punch a little hole through here. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but the map just looks. You know, we're only on, like, I think the 20th a.m. turn. And uh, just to compare this to the 20th a.m. is fun. 
that's another thing with vassals. I can open another mo another file, and I can switch back and forth and just kind of look. So it's it's pretty cool. I like I like I like vassal. I love playing on a map. I love being able to see the map, move pieces with my hands. But you know, a it's you know we all know what it's like trying to find someone that has the same passion we have, and especially us monster gamers trying to find someone that wants to to sit here and play a monster game for days and hours and months but that's what i love about vassals it can never get bumped it can never get moved you can find other people to play with and uh so i guess a big hats off to all the guys and all the companies that provide the vassal modules i own walked him ryan i try to own every game i play on vassal i do not own every game i play on vassal the only ones i don't own are games that are out of print and as soon as that game ever comes into print, I will buy that game. I mean, that's just the way I am because you got to support these guys making these games. So, um, you know, maybe some people think that's wrong that I'm even playing a game that I that I don't own. But if it's out of print or if it's a super old game you can't get anymore, you're not really giving the game company any or taking any money off their table right now because you're only buying it from a private person that already bought it. <clears throat> Again, you, you could probably argue the morality of that. I don't know. But point being is, is like one for me would be three days of Gettysburg. Love three days of Gettysburg. It's out of print. I guarantee you in three days of Gettysburg, I've heard rumors they're doing a reprint. The day that comes out, I, I will buy copies A to sell at my store and I will get a copy for me because that game is awesome. And again, it's not just if it's awesome, if I'm playing it on Vassal and enjoying it on Vassal, I just think that we're supposed to support these people. They put a lot of time and effort into that. A lot of these companies freely provide maps that are, I mean, so to put it in perspective, I was playing Aid to Camp 2 when that came out back in, you know, 2000, 2000-ish, maybe before that, late, late 90s. And no offense, but some of the maps people would make were just, you know, atrocious. Um, I made one for Attack in the Ardennes that wasn't very beautiful uh, by GDW. Now these companies put out, like, the game looks just like the game. They're all, you know, replicated maps and counters by scanning them. So I just, I just want to emphasize, if, you know, Vassal's great to look at games and see what the components look like if you don't own it. I've heard people say they don't have a problem with people trying a game to see if they like it. But again, I'm a big proponent for it. If you are playing the game and enjoying it and you're, you're, you know, you play it regularly or just play it, uh, you know, support those game companies. And, and you know, 95% of you guys are like that. Uh, and, and they know that. Uh, of course, there's the guys that are, but whatever, we're not not trying to get on my moral high horse or anything. I'm just saying super appreciative of the people that, that put these games out. It's awesome. And also the guys that do other videos. Um, my videos aren't super stellar, but um, I'm just a guy having fun doing it on the side uh, with some of my hobby spare time when I'm not playing the game. And so I appreciate all these subscribers and people that, that watch. Uh, again, if you like things or don't like things, feel free to comment. Uh, if you got any comments about any of the stuff I was talking about, uh, you know, I'm throwing it out there in the public, so feel free to comment. Just be civil about it. If you disagree with me on something like, like um, you know, me playing Three Days of Gettysburg without having a copy right now, well, it's out of print, you know, voice your opinion, let me know. Uh, again, I will buy it when it's out. I don't think buying it from a private individual is doing anything to help GMT when they reprint the game, so... Uh, I'm, I think it's almost better that I would just buy it from them when they reprint it because then it goes to them. But again, you just be civil about it. I, I don't have any problem with people having a different opinion with me. Just, you know, dial her back as far as, you know, if you're going to type something, just be civil if you disagree. That's the foundation of our country, which seems to have been lost too lately. Uh, anyway, appreciate you guys. Uh, Put what you like or don't like with the videos, what you'd like to see more of, less of, less, you know, maybe less of me rambling. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just trying to fill up time. I don't script this or anything. I don't really have an agenda other than just playing the game. So thanks for watching. Remember to click like. The likes help. It helps it show up. Uh, 
and uh, I'll see you next time.